Today we'll be ranking the top 10 strongest Pokemon for a playthrough of Scarlet and Violet. Starting with Satitan. Now, to use Satitan, subscribe, watch the end, and comment your favorite Pokemon on this list to enter our giveaway. So, Satitan is a later game option whose pre evolution Satoddle can be found in the 30s. But it evolves as soon as you get the Ice Stone from Glacido Mountain, so right away you can take advantage of some really good base stats. Like, it's 170 HP. So, this list is only looking at non legendary Pokemon available before for the post game. No paradox forms, no Maridon, Caridon, whatever. But even if we were looking at them, Satitan still has the highest base HP of anything from Gen 9. And beyond that, you know, even for an ice type, it's a really good Pokemon. Its first ability is Thick Fat, which very nicely negates its fire weakness. But it's also got the move Slush Rush, which gives it double speed in snow. It's also got a very nice 113 attack, and it learns the move Ice Spinner at level 44. And lastly, it's a Amazing for the Elite Four. You've got advantages over ground, flying, and dragon with multiple exploitation of 4x ice weaknesses. In a nutshell, so Titan shows ice types at their best. But another incredible Pokemon is Mabostiff. As a Pokemon that made it onto our top 10 early game Pokemon, Mabostiff is incredible actually through the entire game. As a pure dark type, it's got a nice 120 attack, and the rest of its stats are respectable 90 defense, 70 special defense, 80 HP and speed at 85. It's great against the Psychic and Ghost Gyms, and it goes neutral to all four members of the Elite Four. Plus, it gets the move Intimidate. Look, there are a lot of really scary physical attackers in the Elite Four. All very scary Pokemon in their own right, and having a very solid Pokemon with the addition of Intimidate is amazing. Now, at number eight, we've got the False Dragon Titan, Dondozo. So also feeling out that bulky archetype, this is just a very solid water type Pokemon, right? You've got 150 base HP, 115 defense, and a nice 100 attack. Plus it's got access to really good moves. Body Slam, Earthquake, Waterfall, Rock Slide, Outrage, Crunch. It also gets Aqua Tail, the Dragon Move Order Up. It's just a very well-rounded Pokemon. You're only weak to Grass and Electric, and while it's only the third best water type in this gen, it's still a really good water type. Up next, we have our Bolivar. Now, personally, this is the Pokemon I've had the most fun with so far, but also it's really good. It's useful through a whole playthrough, but once you get its final set, it's amazing. So we've got the ability Seed Sower that activates grassy terrain when it's hit by an attack. At level 46, it then gets the move Terrain Pulse. Now with no terrain, this is a 50 damage normal move. But because there's a terrain out, the move becomes grass and rises to 100 base power. But then the effects of grassy terrain are applied, so the grass move gets a 50% additional increase in damage. And then our Bolivar is grass type, so its same type attack bonus raises it another 50%. So I, I think that means it's kind of like dishing out 225s, and that's before super effective and terrestrializing. So that's just a fun, crazy stack you've got going on. It's also got great bulk to take hits, and the grassy terrain heals it every turn. It's just really good at going out there, staying alive, and killing Pokemon, and that's exactly what you want. Now, number six, we've got Glamora, a rock poison type. This is one of my favorite new Pokemon. So the main draw of this Pokemon is is its ability, Toxic Debris. This spreads toxic spikes onto the field when hit with a special move. So you can throw it out against a physical attacking Pokemon near the start of a battle, and their whole team will be immediately poisoned on entry. This is especially crazy because Glamora gets the move Venoshock, normally a 65 base power move that goes to 130 when the opponent is poisoned. It also gets the damaging move Toxic Spray, which lowers the target's special defense by two stages. It's got decent 86 speed, defensive 90 and 81, and 130 special attack. Glamora is a sneakily good Pokemon, and I cannot recommend it for your team enough. Now, at number five, we've got old reliable Annihilate. One of the most reliable attackers in this game. Starting on a match, want to get an easy plus one? Hit him with a close combat. Opponents terrestrialize, and you're really scared you're going to die. Hit him with a close combat. I mean, that's that's really the main strategy here. You've just got a Pokemon with great stats across the board and close combat. <laughs> I should also mention that Annihilate's ghost typing does a lot for it. It gives you a very nice boosting coverage that a fighting type would just not have on its own. Plus, did I mention 
close combat. Now, number four, we're gonna go with a tie between Serilege and Armorogue. So here's how these Pokemon compare. Sharkadet starts off not great and falls off super hard. But once you get access to evolving them, Armorogue begins better. See, Armorogue is a special attacker and this line gets Lava Plume pretty early. So as a fire type, up until 48, Armorogue is better. But at 48, Serilege gets the move Bitter Blade. It's a 90 base power fire move that can take advantage of Serilege's attack. And it heals 50% of the damage it lands. It is really good. Pairing this with Flame Charge especially, you can start out by landing a smaller piece of damage, then finish the Pokemon off with the Bitter Blade to gain more health, and now you're plus one and can outspeed most things. Armor Rogue doesn't get its special move, Armor Cannon, until 62. With Level Cap, you can only have this move for the champion and other final fights. So Armor Rogue was a little more consistent, but I felt like Sarah Ledge really shone through the Elite Four and final fights more. Either way, they're both good enough to make it to the number four spot on this list. They've got nice stats, good move pool. They're a great replacement for the starter. They're just consistently great Pokemon. Now, surprisingly enough, at number three, ladies and gentlemen, we have the Pseudo. Backscalibur. So like all pseudo legendaries, Backscalibur evolves late and has 600 base stat. This thing has a respectable 87 speed, but its most noteworthy stat is a 145 attack. So that is the second highest in the game, even higher than legendaries. If you fought Hassle or used it, you know this thing hits hard. Ice Dragon on a pseudo is also quite interesting. It ditches the four times weakness and instead has five 2x weaknesses. You're weak to Fighting Rock, Steel, Dragon, and Fairy. It's also got the ability Thermal Exchange, which is surprisingly mediocre. When you're hit with a fire move, your attack goes up one stage. But this game has like zero fire types. Not a single Pokemon in the champion team knows a fire move, and Rika's Camerupt is the only fire type on the Elite Four. Move-wise, it's very solid. You've got Stab, Ice Beam, and Dragon Claw. Crunch gives extra coverage, and of course, Glaive Rush is very interesting with 120 base power. It's double-edged sword though, because if you don't kill your opponent with it, it will land double damage damage the next hit. So, I don't know. For pseudos, I'm not in love with Backscalibur, but still. There's no denying its stats are amazing, so it comes in at a nice number three. But a Pokemon I'm actually more impressed with is King Gambit, the new evolution of Bisharp. So this thing is slow with 50 base speed, but it hits like a tank. 135 base attack, 120 special defense, 100 HP, and 85 special defense. Dark Steel is a great typing, and that's not even the reason it's number two. No, that's because it's got one of the most insane abilities in Pokemon history. Supreme Overlord. This makes it so King Gambit receives a 10% increase in attack and special for each Pokemon that is fainted in their party. So if you just save this as your last Pokemon in every fight, free 50% boost to attack. Dude, then you can stack that with Stab and Terra Boost. Not to mention it's a great option to Jurassilize since you can remove its 4x weakness. You get Night Slash at 40, Iron Head at 57. And if you really want to get invincible, you can always run Iron Defense from 45 and on. By TM, you get Digs and Headbutt, Shadow Claw, Poison Jab, x Scissor, Stone Edge, Giga Impact, Focus Blast, Steel Beam, or Terra Blast. This thing is crazy. Now we wanted to give a quick honorable mention to Gold Dango. This is Gimme Ghoul's evolution, and it's got really good stats. But something I personally care about on this channel is how much effort a Pokemon takes. And for the average player, getting 999 Gimme Ghoul coins is a grind. And so while it is good, the grind is not quite enough worth it to make it on our list. Okay, but what about our number one spot? What if there was a regular Pokemon you can get that had the stats of a legendary? Well, Palafin's normal stats may not be great, but when you swap it out, its zero to hero ability gives it 650 base stats, and most notably, the highest attack in the game at 160. It's got exceptionally good tight matchups, it's only weak to grass and water, and its stats are absurd. Anyway though, thanks for watching, please subscribe and comment your favorite Pokemon to enter a giveaway. Also subscribe because I like to see the number go up.